Patrick Ewing. How you doing, sir? Etan, I'm doing well, brother. I'm doing well. I'm 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 making it. You making it, man? Listen, it, it's you know you know it's an honor for you to come on my show, um, the rematch on BasketballNews.com and Fly TV. You know, you know, I I never really told you how big of a fan I was of yours growing up. Like anybody who knew me growing up knew how big of a fan I was of the Knicks and of Patrick Ewing. You know what I mean? Like, and like you know, I was in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And I remember, you know, I had, that's when the Ewings came out. You know, I'm going back and forth to Harlem uh, because I was born in Harlem. Right. And I had a pair of the Ewings. So I got a real pair and then I got a, a fake pair from 125th Street. Remember when they had all the different stuff, 125th Street? So I would wear the fake pair around because if somebody scuffed them or stumped them, it was going to be an issue. <laughs> and I kept the, the real pair nice and clean at home. But nah, I was, I was a huge Patrick Ewing fan. No, I appreciate that, man. And I, and I enjoyed working with you with the Wizards. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's funny how we come full circle. We were just joking about when you was at Syracuse and Coach Orr had me calling you and, <laughs> and giving you all these tidbits that I'm like, hey, Lou, why are you having me calling these guys? And, 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 and you know, we have to, Georgetown have to play against them. But I've always been a fan of yours as well. Uh, I love your work ethic. Had the opportunity to work with you with the Wizards. Right. And just see all the things that you did to get yourself prepared. Um, you know, that's why you had the, the, uh, a very good career. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Coach Orr is my guy. Um, and, those, and those and those talks that you had to me back in Syracuse, those those help. You know what I mean? Because, you know, of course, how, how I looked up to you. But I want I want to take it all the way back. I want to start back with your relationship with Coach John Thompson. Um, he was somebody that I had a tremendous amount of respect for. And we grew to be good friends, you know, over, over the years as I was playing here with the Washington Wizards. But um, let's start off with the impact that he had on your life. Uh, you know, it, it, my relationship with Coach Thompson uh, was it, it went beyond uh, coach, uh, coach player uh, relationship. You know, uh, we had I had the opportunity to play for him. I had the opportunity to learn under him and see all the different things and even went to battle with him and just see all the different things that had happened and shaped that that shaped him to be the person that he that he was and you know a lot of the things that uh, that i i stand up for now are things that i've, I've learned from him uh you know i, I always tell everyone he, he was uh, uh started out as a coach player relationship then became uh, a friend a confidant a mentor all of those things the second father all of those things roll up into one uh, I admire him. Uh, if it wasn't for him, I would not be back here at Georgetown coaching. Um, and I, I respected him deeply. Um, you know, he had a he had a certain style of coaching. Are there elements of his of his style that you kind of adopted and implemented with with your coaching style? No, uh, I mean, I we're all different. You know, we borrow from everybody. Uh, I had the opportunity to play for a lot of great coaches and also coach with a lot of go great coaches. So I try to borrow from everyone, and then you know, form you know, add it to the to what what I believe. Um, you know, I was fortunate enough that when I first got the job, Coach Thompson was here, and I was all I would always uh, always be picking his brain, uh, even to the to, to the last time I saw him before he passed. You know, I'm at his house talking to him about about basketball and, and about Georgetown. Uh, so I'm not going to say I, 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 um, I, there's a lot of a lot of things that I took from him. Uh, I just think that the whole philosophy and the whole part about giving back and empowering uh, people that look like us. Uh, those are the things that, that that I borrow from him. You know, one of the things that I really admired about him, you know, watching him when I was in middle school and high school is that he stood up for black coaches he spoke out about racism and that was something that i really you know you didn't really see a lot of coaches doing that at that time you saw you know nolan richardson and maybe a handful of others but you know coach thompson did that did he talk to y'all and teach y'all about society the way people are going to view you um things about that when you were his his player yeah we talked about a lot of those things and then he would also bring people in that look like us who who uh who made it in other uh, other avenues, not just sports? You know, bringing pe uh, people who look like us. That was at Coca Cola. People look like us. That that was at McDonald's. James Brown was another person that he brought in. He he started out playing basketball at Harvard and and went into broadcasting. Look how uh, great uh, of a job uh, that he's been doing over all these uh, all these de these decades. 
So he would bring people in that that like that to talk to us about there is life after sport. There are people uh, who look like us that are doing other things than than just either throwing the ball or, or bouncing the ball. So he would try to educate us about everything that's going that's, that that was going on in life and that was going on uh, for us. You know, I remember um, back in the day there was some things going on. You know, because you know. Fans have an interesting way of sometimes showing their, um, you know, enthusiasm for their team. Um, that's a nice way of saying it, right? Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> but I remember a, a time where there were some ugly things coming out of the crowd uh, during the Georgetown games when, when you, you were playing there. Uh, I remember people holding up a sign that said, you know, Ewing can't read this or, you know, making racially... Uh, derogatory comments uh, from the fans, and some of that might have even been during the Syracuse games. You know, what did Coach Thompson teach you and advise you on how to handle that? Because that had to be difficult for, you know, a teenage young man uh, from Kingston, Jamaica, big up Jamaica, right? Uh, to, be to be able to deal with. So what was Coach Thompson's uh, advice to you? Um, you know, you're talking about something that happened a lot of years ago, but um, I just remember the incident happening, him pulling us off the floor, mm -hmm. and, you know, him telling them, telling them we're not going to continue the game until all those, those racist, crazy uh, signs were taken down. Um, he, you know, he stood up for me. He, he was, he went to battle for me. He, he wanted to not only the people that we were playing against, but everyone knew, know that, uh, you know, we were a family here and we were going to stick together. You know, we can't, and then I, and then I felt like, I, I mean, I don't care what they say, what they, they're the people in the stands. All they're going to make me do is just take it out on, on, on their team. So whatever venom or anger I was feeling towards the, the fans, even though I, I couldn't go in the stands. So right. I was gonna make sure that I take it out on every one of their, their players. You know, I, it, it, it's interesting because I remember I followed you and I was watching you. I remember that you, um had an interesting relationship with the media uh <laughs> while, while you was at, at georgetown and look look i in my old time playing i didn't really like the media myself which is it is it is interesting because now i got into the media right. but the reason why is because i didn't like the way that they covered so many players um especially black players uh in the nba now of course now it's a little bit different because guys have their own social media so they could cover themselves but back then before social media it was really tough so so how, how how did you learn how to deal with the media and describe how your relationship was with them while you were in college well you know it's funny because i learned about the media at an early age and i think that kind of uh, shaped the, the way that I, I i viewed the media because here i am here i am i was 12 years old when i moved here from jamaica uh -huh. and then at a point I started playing basketball, a game that I loved, and I started getting becoming good at it. So then I started getting all these media uh, attention from like seventh grade. So seventh grade, eighth grade, I'm getting all these media attention. So everybody's building me up. Uh, and then at a point, it, it turns, and they start chopping you down. So uh -huh. they build you up to chop you down. So that's the kind of, of uh, relationship that I had with the media now. You know, in hindsight, I probably should have uh, did a little bit more of the of the of the interviews and all that, those things. But I looked at it as, look, I could not do every interview. Um, and then, you know, be coming here to Georgetown, Coach Thompson, he he was also a person that uh, took the brunt of 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 the venom that they they felt towards me because I was not uh, given a, a lot of interviews. Uh, so all of those things shaped. The way that I I thought I felt about the media, um, but some of them are good, and then some of them are bad. Or, or some of them are bad, and you can't lump everybody all in the in the same in the same pot. You have to deal with uh, every person as an individual, and, and that's something that that's something that I learned over the over the years. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of Syracuse fans would want to know what was your most memorable moment playing against Syracuse. Um, <laughs> And, and so I have to ask that question. And, and I got to say, one of the ones that really stick out for me um, was you and Pearl. <laughs> that, was, that was a big one, you know what I mean? But what, but what was what was one of your most memorable moments? Um, we've had some great battles with, with Syracuse. Um, starting, you know, playing, going, first time being in the Dome, 
and seeing all those fans, uh -huh. you know, all those orange. Uh, and, you know, I remember a game, uh, I think it might have been, I'm not sure what year it was. Uh, I'm at the free throw line and somebody threw an orange and hit, uh, <laughs> hit the backboard. And, and yes, you know, going against Pearl, look, Pearl did not have a great NBA career, but he had a great uh, college career. Yeah. Uh, things that he could do with that ball. And I was fortunate enough to, you know, I, I played against or played with Pearl. Uh, I went, went, went with uh, a New York team. Uh, to California, and Pearl was on that team. Okay. So we, we played together when I was, uh, a, a, you know, a senior coming out of hi a high school and then battling him. And then it's funny, you you, br you brought him up, and uh, I was walking through uh, the offices here yesterday, and they, uh, I think they were showing the record me off the Big East. And they they show when he gave me that 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 shot, <laughs> that shot. and I was like, man, I still I still feel that shot. So I was like, where where the hell is Pearl at? <laughs> Those were the good old days. Oh, when you say the Big East, it, it it still hurts me so much that Syracuse is not in the Big East anymore. Like that, like oh my gosh, I don't even want. I'm not even gonna get started on that because it I it really. I hate them being the ACC, like I honestly do. I want to ask you something else. You know, you were roommates. I, I grew up in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and you were roommates, correct me if I'm wrong, at the 84 Olympic uh, team with Wayman Tisdale. Is that correct? So Wayman Tisdale, he went to my middle school and high school, Carver Middle School and Booker T. Washington High School. Like, he is like, you know what I mean, the man in Tulsa. Like, he is somebody, he came and he, he would speak to, I, I remember him speaking to me, like in middle school, you know, in, in high school, offering words of encouragement, coming to speak to my my class. We used to watch him play during Juneteenth, um, you know, because he played the guitar. Was he, he was just a great human being. But yeah. talk about, you know, your relationship when y'all were roommates, um, you know, during the Olympic team. You know, Raymond and I got to be very good friends and stayed uh, very good friends over the years. You know, we would talk about his music, you know, just like you, you alluded to. He was a big uh, fan of music. Uh -huh. you know, matter of fact, he even had his own his own band. They were uh, good too. But always, always, yeah, they're very good. I, mm -hmm. I, I bought some of his, his records uh -huh. um, or or CDs, whatever it was. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, we got to be very good friends. Of course, we had we battled each other. Um, you know, in practices during the Olympics. You know, mm -hmm. it's funny because people don't realize how great uh, of a team that was in '84. Uh -huh. You know, you had three guys that's that's on that team played on the dream team. Myself, uh, Michael, and and Chris, and you know we 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 demolished everyone that we played back then, and then demolished everybody that we played uh, during the Olympics. Uh, right. But it it was a, it was a great team. It was a great uh, cast of guys. And Wayman was you know he and I developed uh, a great friendship. And his daughter and my son uh, they still communicate uh, to this day. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's real cool. You know, um, you know, I want to I want to get back to uh, coaching and and ask you, you know, how much joy do you have in, in coaching your alma mater? Like, it has to be special. You know, I know y'all had a little bit of a rough season this past season. Um, you know, but but how great is it to walk out there coaching where you played, where you learned, where Coach Thompson, you know, taught you and nurtured you and everything like that? How great is it to be coaching at your alma mater? It's great to be back here, but you know the, the funny story is, Etan. I, I think the reason why the reason why I'm coaching is because of guys like you. My first year coaching was coaching you, coaching Brendan, Jahidi, and all those guys. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you guys. You know, I would be I'll be sitting there teaching you guys things, and sometimes it will be like you guys are not listening. And then when I see all the things that that I, that I'm trying to show y'all in practice or teach y'all in practice. You're actually doing it in the game. That's why I fell in love with coaching. And then now, fast forward all these years, to have the opportunity to coach here at, at Georgetown, a place where uh, I thought that this was four of the best years of my my, my life. And that's what I want to do. That's my my vision uh, for myself as a coach is to to give back, give you know, teach these kids all the things that I've learned, you know, through all my 17 years of of, of playing, and now. You know, 15 years of coaching in the NBA and uh, what five years now at Georgetown. Uh, yes, we had a, a rough year uh, this year, and that, that's all part of of, of growing. Uh -huh. And that's how when I talk to kids, I talk to them about life, and I talk to them about, you know, in life you're gonna have bump, bumps in the road. This was my bump in the road. This was my uh, minefield of life. 
Uh, and, you know, it's all about learning from it, growing from it and becoming uh, having it make you become a better man and a better person. You know, it's, it's interesting because I watched a lot of the games um, and I, I, I was actually at the um, Verizon Center. I still call it the Verizon Center. Was it the Capital One Arena? Whatever it was. I've been calling it the MCI Center sometimes. Hey, I, I get mixed up. <laughs> <laughs> but I was at the game when y'all played Syracuse and I was really impressed with Aminu, Aminu Muhammad. Um, I, I've seen him play since he was younger. He actually played for our AAU team, for the older team, right. um, FBCG Dynamic Disciples. Got to give a shout out to them. But, you know, he right now he is going to test the waters, right? He's going to, you know, tiptoe in, see how the feedback he gets. And he didn't hire an agent or anything like that, but he's going to test the waters, but left the door open for the possibility of him returning. Right. Um, you know, I saw him just tear Syracuse up. Like he, you know, it was, he, he guarded everybody from, this is from Jesse to Buddy to Jimmy. He went over to, you know, he, he is on everybody. Yeah. Um, he's really somebody who can be a special player. What's the advice that you give to him as far as how to decide if he's ready to go to the next level, if he needs a little bit more fine tuning? Um, because you're somebody, you could have left after your freshman year, right. but you stayed four years and obviously it worked out great for you. And of course, this is a different game now. But what is the advice to, that you give to Aminu on how to make that decision? Well, you know, it's I, I just try to be as be as honest as I can to, with him. You know, I, I tell him, you, you need to go uh, test the waters. You need to go see, you know, what's going to happen, if you will be, get, uh, will be drafted, where you'll be drafted. And then, you know, tell him, you know, yeah, if that does, if that avenue does not work out for you uh, this year, then I, w I, I would love to have you back. You know, um, I think he was an integral part of our team. I think he's going to, he's only going to get better. I love his motor. I love his, his ability. Still have a lot to learn. Uh, but and, and the, the, the thing is, um, he's a great human being. You know, he works extremely hard uh, as hard as he works on the court. That's as, as hard as he works off the court in terms of getting the things that he needs to be to get done in the classroom. You know, uh, workouts, all that, the, all those things. He's just a genuine, genuine person, and in, in, in this day and age, it's sometimes it's hard to to find those people. Mm, mm. You know, I, I hope he, he, you know, of course, does what's best for him. Um, but I, I think it would be great to see him come back. Um, I think you know, but wish him all the success. He he's such a good kid. You know what I mean? And he works so hard, and you root for him to be have success. You know, right. either way, whatever he decides. You know, let me ask you, what is it like coaching one of your best friends' son? You know what I mean? Like I, I know you coached Alonzo's son too. Right. Um, what was it like co coaching the Kimbe son? Like it's, it's got to be kind of weird because you've seen him probably since birth. Right. And I've been knowing him <laughs> since since birth. Uh, you know, I get on him, I curse him out. You know, he used to call me Uncle Patrick. Now he just calls me Coach. Right. Um, right. You know, but in you know, I've been having, a, I've had a relationship with his family for for a lot of years. I've been knowing the Kimbe since he came here at Georgetown. Mm -hmm. um, and he and I have developed a brother, a friendship, a brotherhood that uh, is te a, 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 a stood the test of time. You know, my job for Ryan is to try to make him the best player, that the best version of him that he can be. Not not to be uh, the Kembe or not to be me, but just be the best version of him. And he's young. He came here at 17 years old. Mm -hmm. So he still has a lot of growth that he needs to be doing to be done on the floor and, and, and as well as off the floor. Um, but you know, that, that's, that's the thing It's it's, you know, I don't look at it as I'm coaching the Ken based son. I just look at it as I'm coaching a young man that I see the potential, but you know, sometimes you have to get kicked in the ass to, uh, for him to, uh, to reach it. I'm not sure if I can say ass on this. That's all right. That's all right. <laughs> but sometimes he has to get kicked in the butt for him to, uh, anybody has to get kicked in the butt to, to reach the, their potential. You know, let me ask you, um, a lot of, there was a lot of buzz, you know, a few years ago about Matt McClung. And, you know, people were excited, you know, about him. He's also showed a lot of highlights. And now with the social media era, you can see just highlights. You know what I mean? And they can, but, but you know, obviously it didn't work out and he transferred. And a lot of people always ask, like, what happened with him? Why didn't it work out? Why, did, why didn't it, you know, uh, work out at Georgetown? But what, what, what went on with Matt McClung? Um, you know, this is the, this is the era that we, we live in. You know, people transfer. 
you know, they could have a great year and they still transfer. They could have right. you know, uh, been be play. Be, be, they could have been playing a lot of minutes and still transfer. Mac had a, a very good career here uh, with with us. Uh, I was still hoping that he was going to come back. It didn't happen. Uh, but all we can do is wish him the best. You know, I still reach out to him from time to time, check, in, check on him. I know he's doing very well in the G League. I know he, he's, been, he's been called up, uh, uh, I think, once or twice. So, you know, uh, all I can do is from afar is wish, wish him all the best. He was great to us when, when we had him here. Uh, he was respectful. He worked hard. Uh, you know, still had uh, room to, to improve. Uh -huh. uh, but that, uh, you know, as you alluded to before, this is the era that we live in. People are going to transfer. You look at the transfer portal right now. There's over, there's over a uh, th uh, thousand people in the in the portal. So, you know, some of them have good years, some of them have bad years, some of them indifferent. But that's how that's life in basketball right now. You know, I was someone who, in theory, I was all for the transfer portal because my thing was, well, if coaches can leave anytime they want to leave and not have a penalty, then why can't players leave and not have a penalty? So in theory, that's that's where I was. But now looking at it, I'm like, oh, this might be getting a little out of control <laughs> because everybody's – everybody, like you said, somebody has a great year and then they leave. I don't – do you think it's something that they're going to have to adjust? Or it, in your opinion, um, do you think it will be okay to have it as it is now? Because at first it was kind of implemented – because of COVID, right? The people had the ability to be able to to change and think, but but moving forward, they kind of got to make a decision one way or another how they're going to regulate it or or what. I'm not sure what they're going to do in the future. I, I, I'm I'm I don't I don't see them going backwards on it. Okay. Um. You know, I think at some point it will uh it will slow down in terms of uh the amount of people that's 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 in it. Um. You know, there, there's talk that the NBA is going to start letting the, these kids go from uh, high school to to the league. So, mm -hmm. you know, the better the, the the elite ones, the the ones in the top fifty, they'll probably go straight uh, from from high school to to the to the league, uh, or at least try to. So, I think that at some point it'll, it'll, it will slow down, hopefully. Um, but I don't see them going backwards from it. You know, it's like there's they've already opened uh, Pandora's box. I don't see right. how they be able to close it interesting it's definitely going to be interesting you know you alluded to your first year of coaching with us uh with the wizards and coaching all of us big men and i thought it was great and i don't know if you remember this but when you was when you alluded to it i i thought about it but the first thing i said to you when you came um you know i said kind of like why are you coaching here and not with the knicks that was like <laughs> the first question i asked you because in my mind I'm like, that should have been the first place that you were coaching, whether right. it was to come up from the ranks of whether you started off at scouting or whether you started off at assistant, third assistant. I was like, you should be with the Knicks. Like, what you doing over here with us? And so, so I got to ask you, why didn't you start with the Knicks? Why didn't that work out? But what you told me when I asked you that, you, you, know, you remember what you told me, but you told me um, they didn't ask me. That was your response to me. And yeah. I was like, you know, Why didn't they ask you? <laughs> um, it's funny because uh, I was, you know, at dinner with Michael, and you know, we we were talking about you know retirement, mm -hmm. and I let you know we, I said you know well you know it's been seventeen years I'm gonna, I'm going to retire, uh, and you know and he's like why don't you come work here in Washington, try coaching if you don't if you like coaching you know stay under coach Johnny Bach was was going to be retiring at the end of that that season mm -hmm. so i was behind the bench and then if you don't like coaching we'll move you to the front office you can try the front office well i tried uh you know the, the coaching and like i said you guys are the reason why i'm so why, why i fell in love with coaching mm -hmm. uh, on you know the next um i was never given an opportunity to to work there so i was given an opportunity to work in washington and you know uh for michael and 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 found my next the next chapter of my life and uh, i'm fortunate enough that i found something that i loved as much as playing and here i am now uh 30 plus years uh later still doing it well shout out to mj for you know you know giving you that opportunity uh getting you started but i i gotta go back to the knicks though i'm like, i still don't understand why you know somebody like like you uh, so for me you know 
and, th and this is my opinion. You can just tell, you know, this is just what I think. I grew a little sour with the Knicks because I th thought it was disrespectful for you to ever play in a uniform other than a Knicks uniform. I didn't like seeing you with Orlando. I didn't like seeing you with Seattle. You, I thought that you should have ended your entire career with New York for all that you gave to New York. Now, this is just me personally. So, so, so that was like strike one. You know what I mean? So then I'm like, when you told me they didn't offer you an opportunity to coach there, I'm like, are they serious? Like, well, I don't understand why. I help me understand why they would not offer Patrick Ewing an opportunity to coach with the Knicks. Well, you know, in terms of me being traded, I think that was that was you know my desire to be to move on to move on. You know, I I, I played there 15 years, and for 15 years, you keep hearing the the chatter. Well, the Knicks it would be better off without him. They need to move on without him. For so so for 15 years, I kept hearing that chatter, and then oh. you know, as I I got older, they you know, he's holding them back. He's on. So I'm like, you know, I, I was tired of hearing it. So I say, you know what? Let, I'm a, I'm a let I'm a, I'm I'm the I'm gonna be I'm the arbitrage. I'm getting them off. I'm getting off this this ship. So, but but wait wait. But was that the media? Because I know the New York media was tough. But was yeah, that yeah. the media or was that coming from the I think it was a little bit a little bit of everything. It was the media. Some of my my old uh some of my teammates. So oh. so you get tired of it. So uh, I just okay. asked to, to move on. And you know, in hindsight, that's something I should not have done. In hindsight, I should have. Uh, ended my career there in New York um, because they felt they uh, they realized uh, in, ter in, ter in terms of the fan <coughs> how important I was for the franchise, mm -hmm. and I also realized how important uh, the franchise was for me. So you know, in, in in hindsight, it was it was a mistake by my part. I should have finished my my career there. Um, but you know it is what it is, Etan. Um, you know people make mistakes. Uh, they made mistakes. I make mistakes, and we move on. I think that I've learned and I've grown from the mistakes that I've made, and hopefully they have done the same. And you know, uh, I'm even though I'm I, last year wasn't a, a great year for us. Uh, I still believe that uh, I'm a very good coach, and I still believe that uh, our future is, is still going to be bright here at Georgetown. Definitely. Definitely. It's it's okay. That does definitely clear up a lot because I thought it was more of them. So I was mad at the Knicks. You know what I mean? I was like, "Hold up, you don't disrespect Patrick Ewing like that." You know? It's okay. All right. So you cleared it up. Right. And all them, you right. kind of wanted to to move on. to move on. Now, so so they're off the hook for that one. Now, as far as the coaching part, I still think they should have offered you a position there. Would would that have been? And of course, you're happy where you are now. But would that have been something that you would have welcomed going back and coaching at, at the Knicks? Oh yeah, I mean, of course. My uh, I was living in the in the, in the area. Um, you know, I'm not living in New York anymore right now. I'm down here mm -hmm. because this job is 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 uh, 24 seven, 365 days a year. Uh, right. Yeah. <laughs> um, Yes, I would have would have loved for them, uh, to work for the Knicks. Uh, I, I, like I said, I, I played 15 years there. 15 years is a lot of years uh, to play uh, blood, sweat, to give your blood, sweat, and tears for for an organization. Um, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, you know, it. I, I I I I was given an opportunity here in in, in D.C. to work for the Wizard, and found my passion. Uh, you know, it's it's funny because a lot of folks would ask me after. That year when I retired is, do you miss it? Mm. And you know my 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 answer was no because even though I'm um, I'm not out there physically playing, um, I'm still helping with the with, with the the, sch the schemes and the, and the things that 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 goes into uh, your team winning. So uh, I didn't miss it. I I found another joy which was coaching, and you know coaching with some guys that uh, were very good to me. Um, who, who was your toughest opponent to go against while you was with the Knicks? Not not as a team, but as a player. Um, and and how did you? Who's that? You have Akeem. You have you know David. You have Shaq. Yeah. You know, all of them is all of them were different. Uh, Akeem was 
Uh, you know, he's a little, little shorter than me, but we had a, a lot of similarities in terms of skill set uh, to be able to shoot the basketball. He might have put the ball on the floor a little better than I did, but going against him, you had Shaq was was a couple of inches taller than I am, was was uh, bigger. And people, when they see Shaq, they don't realize how athletic he was at, at that time. Yeah, especially young Shaq. Yeah, yeah. Uh. He, He'll, you know, I'll shoot the ball down this end. I'm telling someone, catch it, hey. <laughs> He's flying down the other end. Uh, you know, and then David. David was athletic. He, he was had size. He, you know, he's left-handed. Um, so those three guys uh, were were my were this, my three. Uh, was that Buju? Yes. You know, man. Hi. Yeah. Big up Buju. <laughs> You know, I still live, I listen, listen to my, my reggae. All right, all right. <laughs> Those, but I, I'd say Akeem definitely would be would be the, the, the toughest. So how do you even prepare for them? Because one of the things with young players, um, you know, you studied the game. Right. And you studied tape and you studied their tendencies and you studied, you know, the things that they that they that they like to do, their weaknesses. Like you're, you're actually really studying the game. I remember that's one of the things that you – talked about a lot that, that that first year when you were coaching with us um is that the the preparation for the game before the game happens right. um talk about the importance of that it's very important to me uh you know i if i'm playing a team i'm playing there whoever i was playing so i talked about those three as as the the three guys that if you don't bring your your lunch you know bring your lunch pail and hard hat you know you're gonna get uh, your butt kicked mm -hmm. so you know, and then I always, you know, would watch the film or, you know, play, replay things in my head that I, because you know, we played each other so many times that, you know, you learn the, tens and t t the tendencies. You learn, you know, what you did right, what you didn't do right, so what you did wrong. So all of those things I try to replay. What did Akeem do against me? What did I do against Akeem? What did David do against me? What did Shaq do against me? What did I do against him? What was I successful with? So, I would replay all those things. I would watch film on it, so it it, it became ingrained in, in in my in in my mind. So if I if I and then I played at a high level every time I played. It didn't make a difference who I was going against. Right. So I think that if I'm playing at my highest level, going against those guys, everyone else, I'm going to dominate. So that's how I, I I approach the game. You know, I respected the people I played against. But I, I was, I was at, uh, you know, they called me. The, they, my nickname was the Warrior Beast or whatever. But mm -hmm. I wanted to be able to beast or, or dominate everyone I played. So I, that's the mindset I went out there with. So that all of that uh, that went along with my talent helped me to be uh, to, to be as as great as I was. Man, those were the the good old days. I mean, <laughs> watching. I I gotta tell you honestly, because my my grandfather was a, a huge. Knicks fan, and we would sit there in his apartment in, in Harlem and watch the Knicks play. And that's when, you know, as a fan, we would be actively in there with you. So we'd right. be sweating just like y'all be sweating. You know what I mean? Like it's not just sitting there watching. We'd right. be like in there with you, and it was like you know, like y'all played so hard and came so close so many different times, and it was just like heartbreaking. But it's like y'all earned so much respect. In New York, that you still have now, where people still say, "Okay, we need a team that plays and leaves it all out on the court like that group did. That leaves everything, you know what I mean, out there." And you might have come up short, but you still have the respect in New York because you left it all out there. Talk about that. How how important that was to play with that level of intensity all the time. Well, I, I think that. You know, we uh, embodied or embraced, uh, well, embodied the, the the city is blue collar, blue collar, hardworking. Everybody, you know, you have the the factory, the factory workers, street guys, street workers. Everybody, in, you know, you know, they have the guys from Wall Street. But you have mo who built, who helped build the city, the common people. So they 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 embraced what we brought to the table. And you know, Pat Riley, that's one of the things that he stressed. Um, Jeff Van Gundy, you know, all those to my to me, those are the. Uh, you know, Rick Pitino, those are uh, three of the, the best coaches that I've that I had while I was uh, playing for the for the Knicks. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, we embodied this city every time we stepped on the floor. 
You know, there might be some scuffles out there. Yeah. <laughs> we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna scrap, claw, and do everything possibly, physically possible to help us to win. Unfortunately, it, it, it didn't work out for us where I, I, I wasn't able to win a title, made it to to two NBA championship games. Fortun unfortunately, I only was able to play in one. Uh, had op had had an opportunity to to win a title, but it was uh -huh. it was taken from me by Keem. I I beat him in college. He beat me in the pros. Right. Uh, but then I, I I go to I go to coach in Houston, and I'm sitting in 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 the in the cafeteria, and I see this picture of of a Keem blocking John's shot. So uh, every day I'm calling John up. I'm like, why did you not pass the ball? <laughs> <laughs> but. No. No, we, I just felt that we embodied the city, and the city embraced us. Uh, and then that was, you know, other than when the Knicks were uh, won the, those two uh, titles, uh, my era was was uh, some of the best eras uh, of, of basketball in New York. I mean, definitely we the playoffs. I think ten years straight. Uh, so, you know, that, I think that's why the fans embrace us the way they embrace us uh, today. You know, it's funny. I remember watching. I was young. I might have been like early in high school then, uh, watching y'all play against Houston, and it was on TV. I'm sitting there, me and my little brother sitting there rooting on everything like that. Y'all was doing good, everything. And I remember um, the OJ chase happened, <laughs> and so they cut the game off and went to the chase, right. and we was like. Get that off the screen. Go back to the game. What are you doing? So we yelling and fussing and stuff like that, right? And so mom comes in and she's like, "What y'all?" That was back in the day where you can't be, you can't just be yelling in the house like for no reason, you know what I mean? So my mom was like, "What are y'all doing yelling in here?" And we tried to explain to her, and she was not getting it. She's like, "Don't be yelling in the house like that." But we was really mad, and then you know, because they cut away from the game. But that was like the passion that most New York fans had right. watching the game. So like all of those losses, it's like New York fans took those losses with you. You know what I mean? Like to heart, like they felt it. Like you know, whether it was the the, the Charles Smith part or the you know the, the the layup one in Indiana, we were like, oh, like in all the different and the, and the Houston one, the San Antonio. Like we took those losses, so it was like you know we wanted y'all to win so bad because you played so hard. You know what I mean? So what 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 do you think about when you go over those those? You know some of those losses people still come up to me and like i was in the airport somewhere in new york I think uh, New York, and some guy comes up to me patrick i love you but how you missed that <laughs> like, man that's like 30 years ago you know? right 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 <laughs> um but you know they had a passion they had yeah. a passion for the team they had a, they wanted us to be successful they thought that they knew everything about basketball of course <laughs> of course most of, them most of them didn't but they think they but you know they did have a passion for us, and they did support us. Uh, they booed us when when they thought that we weren't weren't doing well. Yeah. They also cheered for us. You know, uh, I wouldn't change it anything. I wouldn't change for anything in the world for play, playing in New York. I would have loved to have won a championship uh, um, or, or two, um, but it just wasn't in the cards for me. We had, we were going against a guy named Jordan uh, uh. and his teams. Yeah. And then, uh, unfortunately, we lost to to uh, Akeem, mm -hmm. and I I thought that we were going to be able to get back the next year. I hurt my my leg, and then I, I missed the layup, so we weren't able to to advance uh, to play against Orlando, and then hopefully play against uh, Akeem again. But you know what? Um, it is what it is, Etan. I I've had a a, a great career. Mm -hmm. I I was fortunate enough to to live in Jamaica, a poor kid in Jamaica. And my mom worked her butt off to get us here to America and fell in love with, with a game that uh, that has given me a lot of things that I would never have, have achieved if I was still back home, back in my, my native country. So um, I'm blessed and that's how I look at it. And I was fortunate enough to play for the Knicks uh, and help them to, to uh, to build a build their franchise into one of the one of one of the powerhouse in that in my era, definitely, definitely. And, and I was always gonna ask you about Spike Lee. But did, was Spike Lee like? Did he help or hurt? You know what I mean? Like, because you know, sometimes, of course, after the the Reggie Miller thing, everybody was mad at Spike Lee. Like, I mean, me too. I'm young. I'm like Spike. You should have said nothing. Right? You know what I mean? <laughs> but the thing is, Spike is Spike is not. He's not out there playing. That you know, we were the ones who made the mistakes. Pat, 
you know, Spike is, a, is an avid fan. I remember my rookie year, uh, um, first time meeting Spike. And I think back then his tickets was way up top in the building. <laughs> okay. It's always a pack. He talked to, talk to the owners. Let, you know, I want to move my seat down. Yeah. Once he did his first film, I think it was Do the Right Thing. Mm -hmm. oh, she's got to have it. She's got okay. to have it. Okay. From he did, and he did that movie, and from that day on, he all his seat was up, was on the floor. So he did everything positive to earn those those, those seats. And he's he's just like every other New Yorker. They're they're fans. They want to support the team, and right. they 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 still they're still here. Uh, he's still there supporting the team even mm -hmm. now. Yeah. I see. I see. And they've had some some tough years and they, you know, and he's still out there right on the front row supporting them. So he is a a, a forever Knicks fan. Right. Yeah. A forever Knicks fan. So are y'all are pretty much um, a lot of people want to know the you know, because they want to know how Knicks like like John Starks and you know all the old guys, you know, in rest in peace, Anthony Mason. You know, that still really hurt when he really passed. He was a great guy. I was actually supposed to do a a, a panel with him in New York. Mm -hmm. um and it was like maybe a little bit before he passed so he he was really a a, a great guy in the new yorker like to the fullest at heart like he loved the city but how are the all the old guys they're all all you know good and everybody all talk and everything like that so your old teammates yeah we all still talk um good john and i we still we'll still you know he works for the knicks mm -hmm. uh, so you know he, he'll call we, we'll hang out uh, when he when he came to our game at, in the Garden, Herb Williams, we still communicate. Uh, Derek Harper, we still communicate. Doc, Doc Rivers, um, you know me and Oak, we 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 were still communicating. We're not communicating right now, but hey, look, Oak was one of my 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 best teammates. Uh, I respect everything that he did uh, on the court. Um, but uh, so it was Greg Anthony, so a lot of them, I still we still communicate. Uh, we're all doing our own things. Um, but yeah, the, you know, we, we, we are, uh, we're friends, we're, com uh, we're competitors and, um, we did a lot of great things together. So you mentioned Oak and you said y'all not really communicating right now. I, it, it's interesting. I, I interviewed Oakley uh, a few years ago after the thing with, um, Dolan happened in the garden. This is like when I, when I first started doing, uh, the rematch, uh, I was with the players tribune. Um, and I interviewed him about it, and he talked about uh, a lot. And it was a real ugly scene, and I, I was I, I felt bad for Oakley, you know, just because it. I didn't feel that that's how you do a former New York legend great when they come back to the Garden. I mean, you know, I I ain't know I ain't know watching the Wizards great, but I go back to DC, they ain't gonna do me like that, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's I'm like that's just not how you how you do. Right. Um, so, but we, we we did the interview and we were talking. And he said he he made an a uh, uh, he he alluded to the fact that some players didn't support him the way that he felt they should. He didn't say that you were one of them, but he said you know because he was like you know I really just know you one year because he played that one year in D.C. Mm -hmm. And when I saw him, I saw him at at um, All Star Weekend in New Orleans after it happened. I gave him a big hug, man. You all right? You know everything you. You need anything? Like I thought that was messed up, and I went on a few shows, talked about it. Uh, you know, actually, I went on Mac Michael Rappaport's show with mm -hmm. Kenya Martin and talked about. It. I was like, "Yeah, they did Oakley wrong." I think I read, wrote about it, and he was like, "Well, you know, me and you, we really only knew each other one year." He was like, "And you was kind of quiet, to be honest with you, most of the year." And I was, I was, I was kind of, I was just, you know, come on, I had legends there. I'm just like, watching and learning, and um, he was like, "But some of my other teammates." That I've known and played for and sweat with and you know everything like that for for years, they didn't really come to back, you know, for me like I thought that they should. And then he kept saying it, and he sounded to me like like hurt by it. You know what I mean? And I didn't know if you were one of those players in that category because, like I said, I didn't. He didn't say your name. Um, but thinking back on that that incident. Um, do you think that more guys should have came to his support? Do you think that, you know, I, I don't know. How do you think you guys should have dealt with it? I can't speak for others. Mm -hmm. uh, all I know what is what I did. When I saw the incident, I picked up the phone, called, do you need anything? Uh, that I saw that he was, 
you know, they took him, they, they, they cuffed him and they took him. I'm like, you need me to have somebody come bail you out, what, what, whatever you need. You know, what else am I supposed to do? Uh, you know, I, they asked, I was asked about it um, in, by the media. I told them that it, it was wrong. Oak is, uh, was an integral part of our team. He's an integral part of the Knicks fabric. Uh, something like that, you know, should not be happening. Um, but I didn't know what else I was supposed to do. I, you know, is I'm still working in the NBA as, a, as an assistant coach. Uh, I can't, you know, there's certain things that I, my, I'm trying to, you know, work my way up the ladder to hopefully be a, a head a head coach in, in the NBA. So I did not know what else uh, I was supposed to to say uh, or what else I, I was supposed to do. Um, but all I could do was was give him my support, let him know that I was there for him, uh, and anything that he needed. Uh, when I was asked about it, I gave my honest uh, feelings that I thought it was wrong, and you know things like that cannot cannot uh, happen. Um, and I, I supported him, uh, but you know anything else that was that uh, he might have wanted me to do. Um, I, 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 unfortunately. You know, it, it, uh, I, I guess I, I didn't do enough uh, to show him what uh, that I thought about him as a as a friend and as a player and as, and, and as a former teammate, and that's how it is. You know, I I hope as as somebody who watched you all play, you know, your entire careers with New York and was like right there with you. I personally hope that you all get back together and are back on talking terms and do like a a public thing where y'all are together as brothers because that's you know because i when i when i tell you that i'm re i was a diehard Knicks fan like like after y'all like would lose the game i go to school somebody better not say nothing about the Knicks. you know what i mean like that's how how seriously i took it so you know even when you just mentioned yet yeah, you and you and oakley aren't aren't really speaking now like that was like a jab to me like oh hey like you know what i mean like they're it's supposed to be like this forever, like the Knicks over everything, like, and that's. Hey, so look, you know, it's like I like I said before. You know, he was one of my my best teammates. You know, I used to call him the hitman. He was yeah. enforcer. Yeah. Anything anything happened on that floor, uh, he was he. You always knew he had your back, and you know that's. I wanted to make let him know that I had his back in the situation, mm -hmm. uh, but I, I there was only so much that. That I, that I that I could do or, 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 or you know, I, I believe that I could do. I supported him in every way I could. I talked up, even spoke to Mr. Dolan about about the situation, uh, spoke to him about the situation. I know other people try to broker broker a, a, a piece. Um, but, you know, I still respect oh, I, Oak. I respect, uh, still respect this talent. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. Well, I'm still going to hold out hope that y'all get back together and, you Me know, too. become Me brothers. Too. You Me too. too. All right. Me that's great. Too. So if you if you hold out hope with it and it's open and he might I'm 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 confident that it'll happen when it's supposed to happen in due time. Sometimes brothers, you know, fight. Sometimes brothers yeah. argue. Sometimes brothers have disagreements and then they come back together. You know what I mean? As brothers, as yeah. brothers are supposed yeah. to. So I'm holding out hope for that. But Pat, I ain't going to keep you too long. You know, like I said, much respect to you. Um, I'm, I'm rooting for you, except for against Syracuse. I can't root for you against Syracuse. You know what I mean? I can't, I, hey, you my man, but I can't do that. Let me tell you a funny story before I go. So I, I, I'm talking to Bayheim. I said, you know, uh, Coach, I said, Lou, man, every time we play y'all guys, I got to I gotta strip search you, man. I got to make sure you don't have no no orange. You can't have any orange. <laughs> Coach Bayheim was like, well, you know, you got to check his underwear. You might have some, under, some uh, orange uh Underpants on. I said, Coach, I ain't gonna go. I ain't go. I'm not gonna go that far. <laughs> well, you know. Well, you know. And I don't know if you know this either. I wanted to go to Georgetown. That yeah, was my was. first school that I wanted to go to. I, I all like growing up and everything like that. I saw how Coach Thompson was with y'all. I saw the lessons. I saw how he stood up against racism. I, saw, I was like, Oh, I want to play for him. Like it was not even a question. But at the time, um, there was a lot. Y'all had a lot of big men. Right. It was, you know, Jamel Watkins, Bubakar Al. I think um, Boomshay Boomshay was over in Africa, and y'all had him. Call. It was, yeah, Jihadi was there at the time, too. Y'all had a lot of big men. Right. So, you know, Syracuse was my number two option. You know what I mean? And I, I remember I, I remember my, my freshman year, 
I um played against Georgetown, and I wasn't playing that much because I was playing against Od uh playing behind Otis Hill. Otis Hill was the man. He was bigger, stronger, better than me. So I just had to wait my turn. But Otis got in foul trouble real quickly, and then our backup center Elvier Overchina, he wasn't there. So Coach Behan threw me in. I hadn't played like for like 10, 15 games. So I got I get into the game, and Coach Thompson looked at me, right? And then he ran, I guess he yelled at Jihadi and called the play. And every time down, they passed him the ball. And then every time he tried to dunk on me, right? So you know, Jihadi was like a monster back in, and he was 300 pounds and quick off his feet in college, which is I'm like, where did you get this big dude from? So he tried to dunk on me every time, and I'm, I, I tried to block it, tried to foul him, and, you know, anything. But I'm like, you are not going to dunk on me. So I set the record for the quickest foul out in Syracuse history. <laughs> you didn't know that, right? I said I got the record for that, the quickest foul out in Syracuse history. It's like five and a half minutes, something yeah. like that, right? Papers are killing me, like all this, everything like that. So that whole summer, I'm working. Right, like working, working, like getting ready. So my sophomore year, I played Georgetown in DC, right in DC, and I go off like twenty some points, you know, like five, six dunks, blocking shots, yelling, screaming, beating my chest, all kind of stuff. Right. So right after the game, um, the game was over. We won. I made a beeline right to Coach Thompson. And I shook his hand. I was the first person, you know, I went in front of Aheim, shook his hand, and I said, you could have had me. <laughs> and then he was like, oh, I know. And then we left. And so we joked about that later on, at, you know, when I played with the Wizards and we right. became friends. But that, when I said that to him and had that game against Georgetown, I was like, oh, my college career is complete. <laughs> like, I am good now. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but that's how much, you know, respect I had always for Coach Thompson and the program right. and everything that he built. So to see you, you know, coaching there and, you know, and you're going to you had a, you had a tough year last year, but it's going to get better. And you know what I mean? You're going to rebuild, retool and stuff like that. And sure. I'm going to be right at the next Georgetown Syracuse game. You know what I mean? With my with my Syracuse stuff on, though, I got to have my Syracuse. Okay, against you. I'm on okay. Against you. and and no, it's going to be a great game. So I, I I nothing but respect to you. Nothing but respect to Coach Thompson. Rest in peace. Um, and I, you know, I I really hope that you have uh success uh moving forward in, in, in this entire you, coaching man. arena. I appreciate uh, just keep on doing your thing. I love the books. Uh, appreciate it. Appreciate it. Just you have you have you have come a long way, and you know that's what life is all about. You, you know you learn from the mistakes that you make, and we grow, continue. Right. To and when the time comes, don't forget me when I'm coming to knock on your door about your son. Now <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> I hear you. When he's young, he's learning. He's a sophomore now, Jamatha. You know they had all the stuff going on with Coach after Coach Jones left, but no, he's learning and he's he's working hard and he listens and he has a passion for the game. No. And that's what, you know, something that, you know, some young kids, they don't listen and don't have that same passion. Yeah. But, you know, he has a passion. So it is great to see. So, yeah, we're going to be running into you on the road. We, he's playing with Team Durant. So you'll see him on the A. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah. Probably see him this weekend. Yeah. Is, oh, you're going out to Orlando? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. That's funny. Yep, that's where he'll be. I'll so be it, it'll, it'll be great to see you. But hey, I appreciate it. And say what's up to Coach O for me. Oh, I will. Uh, he told me he was going. He was in a meeting in his office on some calls, so he would have came in. He would have came in? All right, that's what's up. That's what's up. All right, appreciate you. I'll be good, man. All right, you too. All right.